This is Nick with Logos by Nick.com, and in today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can create this retro 80s style text using GIMP. So I'll go ahead and get started here in GIMP. The first thing we're going to do is create a new document. So we're going to go to File, New, and I'm going to create a document that is 1920 by 1080 in pixels. Go ahead and click OK. And I'm just going to hold control and roll down the mouse wheel to zoom out until I can see the entirety of the canvas here. And what I want to do is fill this in with black. So I'm going to go to edit, fill with foreground color, and that's going to make the whole canvas black. Uh, and once we've done that, what we want to do is create some text. So uh, I'm going to grab the text tool. Actually, before I grab the text tool, I'm just going to flip around the foreground and the background with that little rotate icon so that white is the foreground color. And I'm going to grab the text tool. And I'm going to choose a nice, um, uh, a nice simple font, preferably with a heavy weight. I like to use Montserrat Heavy. It's a free font if you'd like to download and install it. Um, I'll put a link to that in the description of the video. Go ahead and download, install that font, and then restart GIMP, and, and then it should be there for you to use. Otherwise, you could use any, um, any really any font you'd like. So um, once I've done that, I'm going to set the size to 329. Um, everything else here looks good. I'll just click on the canvas and I'm just going to write for this tutorial. I'll write retro. I'm actually going to make that a little smaller. And you could put some spacing between the letters because we're going to put like a border around it. So I'm going to put a little bit of spacing between those letters. That looks pretty good. And I'll go back to the, uh, I'll go to the move tool and I'll just position this over to the center of the page. Or better yet, we can grab the alignment tool and I'm going to set this relative to the image. And then I'll click on the text in order to select it. And I'm going to center it up on the page um, on the uh, vertical and horizontal axis. And once we've done that, what I want to do is I want to right click on this retro text layer and go to alpha to selection. And then I want to go to the blend tool. And I want to take the black color over here, click on that, and I'm going to change this to like a dark blue, almost like a purple. Not quite purple, but more so blue, but like something really close, something like that up there. And I'm just going to put this in the top right corner. This shade right here, maybe a little more blue in there. That's pretty good right there, 2400FF. If you'd like to use the same exact shade, I'll go ahead and click OK. And with the blend tool, um, what I want to choose from this drop down over here it's foreground to background. Uh, let me let me expand this so you can see it better. HSV clockwise hue. There's different kinds here. If you choose this one, if you choose this one here, it's just regular uh, RGB. But if you choose this one here, you'll notice the difference in shades there. So that's the one I want to go with right now. Or no, you know what? Rather, this one right here, the RGB. We'll go to the RGB one. We'll use the other one next. And what I'll do is I'll just click and drag up, and then I'll hold control to lock the line onto the vertical axis like that to create um, a little bit of a gradient right there. I don't like how that came out. I'm gonna want the white up a little higher, so I'm gonna undo that by hitting control Z, and I'll start the line up a little higher this time. Let's see how that comes out. That right there is what I'm looking for. That's pretty good. And what I'll do next is I'm going to go to select none and I'm going to duplicate this layer. I'm going to click on this button down here that says create a duplicate of the layer and add it to the image. So we have two copies of this text. And I'm just going to uh, grab the um, rectangle select tool and I'm going to create a rectangle going over the top portion of the word right here. Maybe about that far in. And once we've done that, I'll just press delete on the keyboard. Or if you're using Mac, just go to edit, clear. And then we'll go to select none to deselect everything. And what I want to do next is I want to right click on that layer and go to alpha to selection. So it's going to select the bottom half of those letters. And I want to come back over here to the blend tool. And this time I'm going to choose the other one, the uh, HSV clockwise. And then I'm going to fill this in right here. Just hold control and on the hold control and click and drag the line straight up like that. Maybe something like that. Let me undo that with control Z. I'm going to bring it up a little higher. Okay, that right there is what I'm looking for. That looks pretty good. Okay, so what I'll do now is I'll deselect that by going to Select None. And I want to click on this original text layer right here in the middle. Right-click that and go to Alpha to Selection to create a new selection going around that. 
And what I'll do now is click on the background layer and then click on this button over here to say uh, create a new layer and add it to the image. I'm going to use transparency, go ahead and click OK. So we're going to have a new layer beneath the two text layers and I'm going to go to select grow. And I want to grow this by about six or seven pixels. I'm going to see how six looks. All right, that's pretty good right there. I'll leave that as it is. And once we've done that, I'm just going to, using the blend tool, the same shade we were just working with, I'm just going to click and drag going the opposite direction. So from top to bottom like that. I'm going to undo that. Let me try it up from the top here. That looks pretty good right there. I'll leave that. You know what? Let me try something else. Maybe I'll do something like that. Okay, that's that looks pretty good right there. And once we've done that, we're going to go to Select, Grow, and we're going to grow this by six more pixels or whichever unit you decided to use. And I'm going to create another layer beneath this. So I'll click on the background layer and I'll create another new layer. Again, transparency, go ahead and click OK. And this one, we want to fill it in with blue or our background color. So we'll go to Edit, Fill with Background Color. And then we'll go to Select, None. And then we'll go to Filters, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And I want to use a 150-point blur or pixel blur. Go ahead and click OK. And it's going to put like this uh, blue glow behind the text. So let me zoom out on that a little bit. Uh, the text portion of it is just about done. So what I want to do is I want to merge all of these layers together except for the background. So I'm going to click on the top layer, right click that and go to Merge Down. Right click the next one, go to Merge Down. Right click the next one, Merge Down. And then leave that just as it is so that we have this entire retro text on its own layer. And what I want to do now is grab the uh, Shear tool and then just click and drag this to the right a little bit, just to shear that to the right. Give it a little bit of a slant like that. Grab this menu, go ahead and click Shear. And there you have that. So the next thing I want to do is create this, uh, this pink grid that you see here. And to do that, <clears throat> I'm going to put it on a new layer. I'm going to click on the uh, new layer. I'll take this and click and drag it beneath the text layer. And then I'll go to um, Filters, Render, Pattern, and Grid. And the grid we want to render, uh, I have these uh, settings already set. You want to change the width from 10, 10, 0, spacing 120, 120, 0, offset 0, 0, 0. And for the color, you want to choose a shade of pink. I went with FF0083. Any shade of pink should work well. Go ahead and click OK. And once you have those settings set, we can go ahead and click OK. And it's going to create that grid on the page. And what I want to do now is use the perspective tool to make it look like it's uh, like a, I guess it's like a plane uh, disappearing into the distance. So to do that, uh, I'm going to first create some guides. So I'm going to go to Image, Guides, New, New Guide by Percent. And I'm going to choose a horizontal guide. And I'm going to start out with the position of 65%. Go ahead and click OK to see how that looks. If you notice here, we want the guide going beneath the text. We don't want it going through the text at all. So if your guide ends up going through the text, I would increase the percentage a little bit to move it down or decrease the percentage to move it up. And you could just undo undo add horizontal guide and you could try that again but that right there looks pretty good I just want to create one more guide image guide new guide by percent and I'll put this one at a hundred percent whoops at a hundred percent so it's sitting at the bottom of the image right there and let me zoom out some more by holding control and rolling down the mouse wheel I'm going to grab the perspective tool and then I'm gonna to go to view and we're gonna want Snap to Guides, we want that selected. And then Snap to Canvas Edges, we want that selected as well. And now I'm going to, with the, with the Perspective tool, I'm going to click on that pink grid. And I'm going to take the top corner and snap it to the left edge and the guide right there. And I'm going to do the same thing with the top right corner. Bring this down, snap it over there. Then I'm going to take this bottom left node and just bring this out about that far. And I'll do the same thing on the right. I'll take that right node and bring it out to about an equal distance. Doesn't have to be exactly the same, but you just eyeball it and that should be good enough. 
Okay, that's pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and click Transform to, to finalize that. And now we can get rid of the guide. So I'm going to go to View, Show Guides, turn that off. And I want to make this grid disappearing into the background. So to do that, I'm going to uh, right click on that layer and go to Add Layer Mask. And we want to choose White Full Opacity. Go ahead and click Add. And I want to change the blue, the background color. I want to change that to black. Go ahead and click OK. And then we'll grab the Blend Tool. And then you could just click and drag with the Blend Tool on that pink grid to make it fade or going the opposite way, actually. Let me try that again. That right there is what we're looking for. OK, so um, the next step would be to add these, uh, these stars in the background. To do that, I'm going to take the background here, and I'm just going to create a duplicate copy of that. And I'll leave that right where it is. I'll go to Filters, Noise, HSV Noise. And from these settings, we're going to want 1, 0, 255, and 255. And go ahead and click OK. And it's going to create all that static-like noise in the background. And what I'll do next is go to Colors, Desaturate, go ahead and click OK. And then go to Filters, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And I'm going to blur this by just 5. Go ahead and click OK. And what we'll do next is, let me zoom in on this so you can see it better. What I'll do next is I'll go to Colors, Levels. And I'll just adjust the levels over here until, until we start to get, or you know what, I meant to bring this all the way to the left. Take this one and bring it over here. We want to end up with something like this that kind of looks like almost like snow, or in this case, it would be stars. Um, maybe, all right, that right there looks pretty good. I'll go ahead and click OK to finalize that. And I want to make these stars sort of like a pinkish shade. So to do that, I'm going to go to Colors, Colorize, and I'm going to take the Hue slider and bring that to the right until those stars turn like a pinkish shade like that, maybe at uh, 3. 3.30, somewhere around there. Go ahead and click OK to finalize that. And again, I want to fade this out right where this, uh, this grid is. So to do that, I'll right click on this, on this layer and go to Add Layer Mask. Click Add. Go back to the Blend Tool. And again, click and drag on that. Oh, you know, I got to go the other way. Start from the top, hold Control, bring the line down to where the grid begins. Right about there so that it kind of just fades into the background without clashing with that grid there. And that right there is pretty good. Uh, so what I want to do now is one of the final steps would be to add like a, a lens, like a, like a lens flare like you see here. So to do that, let me click on this uh, top layer up here. And you know what? Let's click on the background layer and create a duplicate of that. Create a duplicate of the layer and add it to the image. And then I'm going to bring this to the top click and drag that to the top and then we'll go to filters uh, light and shadow lens flare and I'm gonna position this you could change the position of where the lens flare is I'm gonna put this right about here like that and you can notice in the preview window where it's gonna land that's right about where I want it I'll go ahead and click OK and then I'll go to uh, colors desaturate go ahead and click OK and then I want to set the blend mode to addition. It's either addition or screen. OK, screen. Yeah, we want to set that to screen. And I'll just bring the opacity of that down a little bit. We don't want that to be too, too bright. So what I want to do now is add like this aged sort of look to it by adjusting the colors, by fading the colors a little bit. To do that, I'm going to right click on the top layer and go to New from Visible. And that's going to create an entirely new layer with a flattened image of everything we've created so far. And what I'm going to do is I'll go to Colors, Curves, and I'm going to take this node down here in the bottom left and just bring that up a little bit to lighten up the dark areas of the image. And I'm just going to take the line and just click and drag that down a little bit to balance it out a little more. And if you notice, if you toggle the preview off and on, you're going to notice it instantly gives it like an aged sort of look, but we're not quite done yet. I want to alter this some more. So from the channel, I'm going to go to the blue channel and I'm going to take this node on the bottom left and just click and drag this up to add some blue to the image like that. And then I'll go to the red channel and I'll take this line right here and just click and drag this out like this 
to make some of that pink pop a little more. And if you toggle the preview off and on, you can see there's a big difference in how that looks. This has more of like that aged retro 80s look that we're going for. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK to finalize that. And that should pretty much do it for this tutorial. That's how you can go about creating uh, this retro 80s style text using GIMP. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.